Oh yeah, I was I was kind of interested in the topic of guns. Yeah, do you do you own a gun? Uh yeah, but but I don't like use it that much. Uh, I'm in Chicago. You're in Chicago. I mean, that is a place. Yeah. If there, there's not a lot of places where I live, where I'd be like, I think I want a gun. There was a guy <laughs> who called in actually. Maybe like the second or third episode, and he just moved to like a, a Chicago. It was like fairly dangerous, and his wife won't let him have a gun. And he's like, "I really want to get a gun." And he's like, "But I can't talk her into having a gun." Oh, yeah, and he's, and he's like, "He's that. like, but I think I like kind of need one." And he was like trying to like hide it. And like well, he didn't know what to do. Yeah, he like didn't know what to do, and he's like, "I don't want to hide it or whatever." But so you you live in Chicago, you own what a handgun? Yeah, a handgun. But what I was wondering was like. The Second Amendment, it's for, like, keeping a well-maintained militia. Yeah. And I was just wondering, like, do you think that would ever practically work out? Or, um, you know, like, like a militia would be able to prevent against, like, government tyranny? Yes, I do, actually. I, I'm telling you, I never bought into that shit. Up until I lived in America, but more specifically when COVID happened, I was like, that's fucking nonsense. Right. But there's, you know, there's 300 and what do we have? 340 million people in this country and more guns than that. Like, I think there's even more than 340 million guns. I do think that if you got to some scenario where the government was, I'm not saying we're anywhere near that point, but where the government was so overreaching where it was like, you know, we're like, oh, this is like a, we've become this dictatorship. Like where a a president was like, yeah, we're, we're not doing elections anymore. Like elections are done. I'm the fucking leader now, you know, and whatever, some sort of crazy thing. People would coalesce and come together uh, and literally fight the fucking government. And I and I mean, I think there'd be a scenario, you know, a lot of people in the military would kind of like, you know, leave the military because they like wouldn't. But I think there is a scenario. But more importantly, it's the the possibility, however slim of that happening, that likely prevents any of that stuff from you know ever really coming to fruition i think well i think like the government would be a little more like clever about about it and like slowly creep on their tyranny like you know they they made income taxes kind of just like created that amendment out of nothing absolutely but the gun one is the one where people are just like nope no fucking way dude you know like people how like they oppose and they go hey we just want like a new thing where it's like a little harder to get a gun like you have to like do a background check and people are like, no fucking way. Now, granted, I don't oh, even, no, I, I'm not I even necessarily, definitely... yeah, I'm not even necessarily saying that's right. Like probably a background check, you know, the way things are, it's probably a good idea, but you know, like the gun stuff is you're never going to get to the point, you know, where you're really like limiting him. It's the most difficult thing in this country because it is one of those like 50, 50 split, uh, issues like you know like abortion or whatever where you're like you know at least 50 percent of people are very in favor of unfettered gun access oh yeah i'd imagine more than 50 percent. but like i was thinking like if how could you possibly organize a militia to fight against the government because couldn't they assault like they, they have a history of like infiltrating any type of like rebellions and like knowing where everything would be beforehand Oh, I mean, it's, I, I it would not be organized. It would not be easy. I mean, it's this weird thing, right? Because don't get me wrong, I don't believe this at all. But like the, all the people, like you know, even you turn on CNN right now or MSNBC, and they're still just like January sixth, January sixth. That's all they fucking talk about. There's all this shit going on. And they're still just like, remember January sixth when these like eighty people or whatever the fuck almost like became the new American government. <laughs> Dude, there's only people, it's crazy that they're still talking about it. There's like January 6th. Remember January 6th still like in the news. And, you know, they, you know, there are, I don't think that there was ever even a, like a, you know, a one millionth of a percent chance of that happening. But I do think that, you know, people can organize. I, I, I do think that if she got really, really bad and it was like truly necessary to save, you know, the country, I guess. I don't know. People would people would figure it out, yeah. Yeah, maybe with like encryption or something, but then it's just still kind of get in. But like, I do know that during coronavirus, a lot of like Asians were being beat on the street, and then what happened was they all started these Telegram group chats where they just bought a lot of guns and learned how to train with guns. Yeah. So like, 
So maybe in community that's like passionate enough. I don't know. I mean, absolutely. I mean, dude, it's like, yeah, it's it's certainly doable. Like it's it's almost like you need the the kind of like underlying need for it, and if that you know is, is pressing enough and important enough, that yeah, I think you can figure out a way to get people kind of like start organizing, and then you know. But we're talking about a scenario where I guess the military is you know showing up and trying to <clears throat> take your guns, and you know, like it, yeah. it, it, we're talking about a pretty backward scenario. But I just think that the possibility of that allows it so that they can never do that shit. Yeah. Plus, uh, I, feel, I feel like um, guerrilla people have have the uh, have like historically been winning a lot of the wars. I mean, I, they definitely do like in, uh, you know, not like overseas. Yeah, in countries. Absolutely. I mean, it seems like in, you know, Ukraine, there's just like a bunch of fucking people who are just fighting that shit. I mean, sometimes it's just a matter of bodies, you know, like as mighty as the U.S. military is. I don't know how many people they actually have in the U.S. military. I imagine it's a couple million. Like, you know, how, how are you supposed to compete if you have, you know, 40 million U.S. citizens up against them who are all just like kind of come together? So. It's a tough one, but I do think with the whole Second Amendment thing that it's just like it's the it's the underlying potential of this shit happen that kind of keeps the government in check a bit. Whereas in other countries, they don't worry about that because they take all the guns away. And so they're like, yeah, it's just not something you need to worry about. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. All right. Anyway, it's cool. Thank Thanks for calling today. Insights. Okay. Take care.